second live stream for the weekend. Today we are going to be talking about All One Photo Raw and Resize AI, but we're going to take a closer look at how this is going to be beneficial for using it with mobile photos. All right, doesn't matter if you have an iPhone or an Android device or whatever you may have. The goal here, and you can even use the same principles with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera as well. The goal of today's session is really just to show you what Resize AI uh, can do. And the reason I'm focusing on mobile photos is because those are usually the ones that have smaller megapixels or smaller sensors. And if you want to print your iPhone photos a little bit larger, but you also had to crop, then this is where Resize AI really comes in handy. But you can interchange all of these uh, as you see fit. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening or how we can calculate our resolution, right? Because if we're gonna talk about sensor sizes or, or images, I think it makes sense for us to understand what the resolution is. So on this particular slide, you can see uh, to calculate the resolution or the number of megapixels that your photo is, you take the dimensions and you divide that by 1 million. And that gives you your resolution. Now, in the example here, my dimensions are 5,472 times 3,648, which gives me 19,961,856 that's how many pixels are in there. Now, to turn this into a megapixel, I take that 19 million number and I divide that by 1 million and that gives me 19.96 pixels or uh, in this case, megapixels. So you round up and that gives me a 20 megapixel image. Now this is the sensor straight off of the R6. So if I were to take a photo with my R6, my dimensions would be 5472 by 3648. Your image with whatever photo you have, and when we get into the examples, I'll show you how to find that. Uh, you'll be able to use this ratio or this formula, I should say, and calculate what the resolution is for your image. This matters because if you want to know how much larger you're making your image, if you're starting with a 20 megapixel image and you want to make this two times larger, well, that means you want to make a 40 megapixel image. So then that means that these dimensions are going to go up by two times the amount. All right. Hopefully that's making sense. If it's not, you'll see in the examples that I have how that works out. Now, what exactly is resizing the image? So in our example here, the original photo or the original sensor is 488 pixels by 251 pixels. Now, this is just me. Uh, I drew a little box on the slide and that, those were the dimensions. And when you do the math on this, it comes out to less than a megapixel we can very easily be in some situations where we are at less than a megapixel, especially if you are working with a photo that was developed for a website because smaller photos are better for websites uh, so the website can load faster. So this is typically where you'll see a photo that's really three megapixels or less 
uh, is in the website industry or, or if you're developing for a website. Now, where resize comes in is it takes those pixels and it doubles them. So now in the example that's below, 976 pixels by 502 pixels becomes the second or two times larger than the original image. And that gives us a 0.24 megapixels. So we're still not even at a full megapixel, right? Uh, and this is not good or bad. This is all dependent based off of what you need for your particular uh, photos. So don't worry so much about that if it doesn't fully make sense. If you go to the description box below, uh, there is a calculator in there and it'll bring you to this website right here. And uh, what you'll be able to do is you can take your photo after you get your dimension sizes and you can plug that information into your photo or I'm sorry, into this calculator from your photo. Uh, and when you hit calculate, it's going to tell you what your megapixels are or what your pixels are. Right. It tells you right here. Now, if you were to take 1920 by 1080, that means you are working with a two megapixel option. All right. That's not good or bad. It just depends on what you need to do with it. Now, where this becomes a deal or where this becomes something that you should probably pay attention to is what is the end state of your image? Do you need to print on a large canvas or a large photo? Do you need to uh, make something that's going to be like blown up onto a billboard or a poster? That's where resizing comes in and you have to know what you're trying to do. Now, on one does help out with that and you'll see that here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and pull on one up and then we will get going with our uh, edit. Now, as always, there's going to be chapters down below. So if you're watching this on the restream, you'll be able to catch up with us there um, and if you are watching this live then welcome and I appreciate you being here so you can ask questions uh, and I will answer those questions the best that I can because I'll be fair in saying I am probably not the uh, super genius when it comes to uh, dealing with photos uh, resize or resizing of photos, I should say. Um, but I do understand the basic principle of it. And that's why we're focusing on mobile photos. So let's go ahead and look at an image. We're going to look at this photo here. Now, this is a TIFF. Uh, I have some that are HEICs, uh, which is just the photo size that comes from on one, or I'm sorry, not on one, um, that comes from the iPhone. But as you can see, this was still shot with the iPhone 11. It was with the back camera. It was at an F2, uh, all that good stuff, right? So the dimensions here are 3024 by 4032. So let's figure out using our calculator. We'll go ahead and open that up. Uh, and I already forgot what the dimensions were. So let's do this real quick. 3024 by 4032. 3024 by 4022. I think that's what it said it was. So we'll help calculate. And it gives us a 12 megapixel image. All right. So we are working on a 12 megapixel image, which is what I know to be true for my iPhone 11. Now, if you have a different uh, mobile device and your megapixel count is higher or lower, it's perfectly fine, then at least you understand how to get the resolution. But the base image that we're going to be working on is a 12 megapixel image. So you just got to keep that in mind. Now, I'm not quite sure where the focus was on this image. I was just trying to take a photo of these leaves and uh, it looks like I got some soft focus. It, 
looks like this is more in focus up here. Um, but we'll start with this one and we'll go from there. So if let's just say I wanted to crop in on this image, right? Um, I want to make my image a little bit smaller so I can hit the letter C and instead of being at 16 by nine, I'll go back to original ratio. Now pay attention to your dimensions as you start to resize because this is going to tell you what you're actually making your, um, how many megapixels you're cropping down to. So if I were to pull this in and let's say I wanted something like this and it doesn't really matter uh, what the composition is for today's purposes, but let's say that this is the size that I want it. Once I hit apply, I now have my image cropped. All right. Now on one, it doesn't show you your crop dimensions. So even when you hit C, uh, you can't see your crop dimensions right here. But we'll just go ahead and apply that. And let me check one area. Nope, it's probably not gonna be down there either. Uh, no, the dimensions are not in the transform. So we'll just go ahead and hit resize now. And this is okay uh, that we don't know what the dimensions are. All right, we'll close sharpening and click on photo size. So when you open up the resize AI, and I'm gonna give you a, a more uh, detailed walkthrough. Now you can see what you cropped your image down to, right? So this doesn't tell you, to the best of my knowledge, I don't see it anywhere. It doesn't tell you what your resolution is that you just cropped your image down to, right? So we went from a 12 megapixel image at this 3024 by 4032, and then we went to a 1859 by 2478. So let's take a look, and I guess I minimized that. So uh, 1859, 2478. 1859. 2478 calculate so we went from a 12 megapixel image to a 4 megapixel image um, and it's like four and a half so you can even round up if you really wanted to and say that it's a 5 megapixel image uh, but we got we definitely have at least a 4 megapixel image that we're working with all right now if I need to get this to go back to my 12, uh, my 12 megapixel image, then what I need to do is determine uh, the math. And I'm, you know, doing public math is uh, not that much fun. So instead of doing a percentage to figure out what the difference is, like I know I need to get uh, eight megapixels back into this image. What I'm gonna do instead is I am going to say on the long edge, that's this area right here because we're on a portrait image, uh, on the long edge, I need this to be 30, or I'm sorry, 40, 32, right? Because that's the original ratio. If I wanna get this back, keeping the same crop, but uh, hopefully somewhere near to the same quality, then I need to make this 40, 32, all right? Now, if you're going to print this image, you wanna make sure that your resolution goes up. Uh, I leave it at 300. I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference. Um, if, you, if you're going to print, you wanna make sure that you have a resolution of 300, uh, 200 to 300 megapixels or pixels per inch. Uh, that's just gonna help the printer with determining how to lay down the dye or the ink. If it's for a screen, this is really irrelevant. Um, so if you leave it at 300, you'll be good. If you put it uh, lower or whatnot, it'll be fine. Now, I'm not gonna apply any of these other settings because I just wanna show you the basics. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit done here. It's gonna give me a dialog box. 
and it'll re retitle it with the file name dash resize. This is gonna go into my iPhone photos, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save, which is going to, as you guessed, save the image into my folder. Now, this is gonna be helpful because I need this image to be in my folder, which I'm going to return to, and where did that image go? There it is, all right. So I'm just gonna select both of these images and we're gonna go into compare mode. Now, I am going to show you, so the image on the right is the original. The dimensions are 3024 by 4032. The image on the left is the resize and look, the dimensions are 3024 by 4032. So I successfully uh, resized this image. Right now, what we're going to do is take a look. Let me minimize that. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on this particular image and I'll come over here and zoom in. Oh, it doesn't want to zoom. Well, that's because I brought this image on the left with my resize. I brought this image on the left back to its original megapixels if you want to call it that I don't know if it's original but I did bring it back to 12 megapixels um, whereas this one it didn't actually uh, it, it's not resized so this is just a crop of the original image without the interpolation to recreate pixels that are necessary to get that one-to-one -one zoom so when I click on this image here, I get that one-to-one -one zoom and I can move around on the image. Whereas when I click on the original image, I can only, <clears throat> excuse me, I can only move around in the area. Uh, and I don't even know if I'm really moving around in the area. Yeah, I guess I'm moving a little bit, but it's nowhere near as much uh, movement as I have with this particular image uh, that has been resized. So there you have the resize in a nutshell. All right. And excuse me for one second. Okay. So now that we have that in a nutshell, it's ready to go. Let's dive into a different example. Now, the next example is gonna be this remote control, which is right here. Now, as you can see, this is one of those HEIC files because that's straight from the iPhone. And I'm going to hit edit. And I'm just gonna crop this. Now, this is the remote to the TV in my hotel room that I'm staying in. So this is not anything like overly uh, impressive, right? I just wanna show you how this works. So let's say I wanted to crop this in and I'm just gonna crop this really, really good, all right? Um, and I will mention right now or uh, that when you use the Resize AI, it's really designed to be used at the end of your workflow. So we have to pretend that I've already gone through tone and color. I gave this the AI auto treatment or whatever effects and all that cool guy stuff. And you know, you can, you can crop the image and start working. So don't worry about that. Like do your normal workflow. So if you wanted to crop your image and that's where you want to start, then go for it. That's perfectly fine. However, if you end up with your image and you try to resize it before you just get this larger image um, and it could be beneficial i don't know it's up to you all right but now that i have this cropped in really really good the original dimensions are 4032 by 3024 as you already know because that's from my iphone 11 all right so when I hit resize, 
it should bring us into Resize AI. So as you can see, I have a really small photo um, in megapixel since uh, the dimensions are 1484 by 1112. Let's go and check that out. 1484 by 1112. 1484, 1112. And um, this calculator is in the description box below. But I also wanted to mention, it doesn't matter which side you put the numbers on here. All right. One thing that is true about multiplication is you can multiply the number like five times two is the equivalent to two times five. Same thing with your dimensions when we start talking about the megapixels. Now, obviously, if I were to put 11, 12 over here in the width, then that means I have a portrait uh, orientation photo. So that's where that would make a difference, but it even gives you the layout here. Uh, so if you want to make sure that, you know, you're getting the right layout and all that good stuff, then sure. Start with your width, which is going to be uh, depending on what lens or what orientation you shot it in, either landscape or portrait, uh, your width will always go first. All right. So just keep that in mind. But we are at a 1.65 megapixel image. So again, you can round these up. Uh, so I would round this up to two megapixels, um, just because it is over five, right? Um, now, Obviously, I got one full megapixel and I'm dangling on a few extra pieces to make another full megapixel. But uh, like for the business of what we're in, you can definitely say that this is a two megapixel image. Uh, and if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comment section. Uh, but I don't believe I am. So now that we know that we are working with a one megapixel image or a two megapixel image, I have a few options now I'm going to push this to its absolute limits, right? Um, because I want to show you like what happens. And to be honest, I haven't tested this out, so it'll be interesting in the resize two, I'm going to click on megapixels. Now, if you don't want to use that calculator, <laughs> you can just click resize to megapixels and look, it tells you what your megapixels are. Um, I don't know why I did not figure that out earlier, but there you go. Uh, it's a learning day for all of us. Now, I'm going to click in here, uh, just click one time, and we're going to try and make this a 20 megapixel image. We're going to make this thing huge. Now, it resizes in, it gives you the preview and resizes inside the window here. And I'm going to zoom in one to one uh, and see what happens, which I think it's still trying to interpolate. Yeah, it looks like it's still thinking about what it wants to do. Um, but as you can see, it starts to try and recreate some pixels. So that way you have some detail. All right. Um, which that's really cool because if I think I was losing detail, especially since I just turned this into a 20 megapixel image, right? Just blew this thing up. Uh, I got a lot of resolution now where I can zoom in and crop. Now, I don't recommend you use this as a, I'm going to zoom in and recrop all of my images. Uh, so I can, you know, have these, uh, larger resolution files. I think that's kind of cheating. Um, I don't know. Leave it in the comment section below. Is that cheating? I think it is, but you tell me what you think. Now, if you want it to add in some sharpening, you can just click this radial bubble here and open it up. Now, like I said, for me, I would go for screen, but if you want to go for print and then, you know, you got all these other options here. Now, these are the exact same controls that you have in the effects tab back in the edit module. All right. So there's nothing different about the sharpening here than using the sharpening there. So if you added sharpening to your photo in the effects module, 
then you don't need to add it again here because you would just be over sharpening your image. Uh, the other note that I would give you about over sharpening an image is adding in dynamic contrast that is like really, really high and then coming here and throwing sharpening. If you do that, you're going to start to see some artifacts on your on the edges of your uh, image and it may not look the way that you want it to look. Now, again, you can experiment with that and see what happens. All right. So that's sharpening. Then we got film grain. And again, this is the exact same film grain module that is in the effects. So if you plan to use the film grain module inside of the resize uh, window or platform, I don't know what else to call this, uh, persona, whatever, if we like lean towards affinity, then you're going to continue re-adding film grain that may be desirable, it may not. I just want you to know that that's what's happening. Now, the two that are uh, not anywhere else is tiling and gallery wrap. Uh, tiling is if you were to try and turn this into like a, a multi-photoed uh, image, then you can make your tiles um, and you can give an overlap. Uh, let's see. I don't use this module all that much, so I don't know if I'm the greatest instructor for this. Um, let's try. Yeah. Oh, you know what? That's why. Because I still had my, uh, my split view on. That's why I was looking all weird. So you can turn this into, you know, you can make your, your, your tiles. Now, again, I've never used this. Uh, I don't make tiles, but maybe you wanted to make tiles uh, for your particular image. This is how you would do it. I would have to refer you to the user manual just because I don't use it. And um, I'm still learning the whole resize thing. So maybe I'll make a video on that later. Now the gallery wrap, I am a little familiar with because I did use this one time because I made a canvas and I wanted to make sure that all of the edges went over the top of the canvas. All right. So what I did is I think I used pixels, but I could have used inches. Uh, either way, whichever one works for you, even if you wanted to use centimeters, you can do that. But I think I had my thickness down to one. And that way, uh, when it printed onto the canvas, because I had a panoramic shot, uh, when it printed onto the canvas, it went around the edges. So if you were to think about your canvas being everything inside of this bigger uh, rectangle and then the corners or everything uh, that's outside of it is just wrapping around the side of your canvas. This makes it to where when someone walks up on the side of your canvas, especially if you don't have it in a frame, uh, they're able to see photo or a part of the photo instead of looking at a blank white canvas. That's all it really is. Um, artists do this often, like painters and, and, and whatnot. And you can even add like a little bit of a uh, vignette. So, you know, if you really just wanted to make that look a certain, like not draw too much attention to it. Uh, I personally did not use that when I did this. Now, the reason why they've added this in here, uh, because you also have this on export you can add all of these, all of these things. Uh, I don't know about film grain, but tiling, gallery wrap, uh, and sharpening are definitely in there. Um, you can add this, or the reason why it's here is so when you get ready to export your image, you have your resized image with all of the correct features and you don't have to re-export it. So let's say you were blowing this up to put onto a canvas because you want to make a uh, 40 by 40 square canvas, right? 
something crazy like that. Well, you would come in here uh, and assuming you've already cropped this to the dimensions necessary, you'd come in here, blow this up to uh, the photo size and probably instead of megapixels, um, you would change this to maybe uh, width or dimensions. We'll just go with dimensions, right? And then you can turn this into inches and you would go there's like some weird clickage. You would go 40 by 40. And now I have my square, uh, which, you know, those would be the dimensions necessary uh, for this to print. Now, for whatever reason, this didn't want to uh, take that. Um, just something to keep in mind, right? Now, I am not going to do that. Hmm gonna go back here and look at that it made it a hundred ninety two megapixel image uh, I just want 20 I'm not greedy all right now I'll turn off the gallery wrap because I don't need the gallery wrap for today's tutorial purpose but just know that it is there it's an option available to you inside of resize AI um, now on this one I'm just gonna go ahead and hit done and we will save it into the same place and I'm going to save it as a TIFF. Uh, my recommendation, if you are working on a raw image, you can actually, I believe there is a resize option for DNG, but if you are working on a TIFF image, you should export it as a TIFF. Uh, the HEIC images, they don't necessarily have, like there's not an export option. So I use TIFF um, and that works out for me. Now, just looking at these two photos side by side before we even uh, zoom in on them, you can see that the image on the right uh, is zoomed in pretty, pretty good. And it would appear that the image on the left is not high resolution at all. You would think that, well, I can get in closer on this one. Well, in fact, you can't, all right? However, if I come over here, I can click in on this one and look at how much uh, closer and more zoomed in I can get on this TV remote uh, than I can on the other image. And that's just because I blew this one up. Let's take a look at the uh, dimensions. This one went to a 5167 by 3872. Uh, which again is a 20 megapixel file now and I that's what I just made so how does this become more practical well if you are taking photos and I'm going to show you this photo uh, there was a leaf that was stuck to my window uh, one day when I was driving and I was like you know what I'm gonna take that photo like why not so if I come into edit, and this is going to be one of those more practical scenarios, right? Uh, and I'm like, man, I really want to turn this into a square image. So we'll go one to one. And I just want to bring this down because I think the negative space is cool, but I don't want a whole lot of it, right? So I'm going through my normal workflow and I want this to be right in the center, uh, right in the middle third and have negative space evenly spread around the leaf, right? So that's my creative flow or process or mindset. And so here is my edited version or my crop version of the image. Now I'm gonna hit AI auto and I don't like what that did. I'm gonna contrast this a little bit uh open up the shadows just a touch i think the mids need to come down and, and bring oh no bring down the highlights yeah that brings back some of that detail right here in the um in the leaf and then i'll bring my blacks down and see what happens with my whites we'll bring those down and this is not going to be the greatest edit right the, the goal of what I'm doing today is just to show you 
how you can resize some stuff. Um, but what I would recommend you do, if you know that you're going to resize an image, do not add global structure at a large amount at least. Uh, you can add a little bit of global structure. And the reason is you will really make your photo look weird if you add a bunch of structure and then you resize it, right? Um, so I think you should do localized structure and I'll take the saturation down. So we'll say that that is a good image, but just for the structure um, idea of what I was explaining, you can go texture or not texture. I don't know why I clicked on texture. Tone enhancer. And then you can scroll down to the detail section increase the details and then we'll invert the mask you can paint this in I'm just gonna do a very rookie job here uh, so you can definitely and you want to spend time on your own but turning that off and on you can see there's just a little bit more of a pop um, in this particular leaf and that's what the structure is doing there. Um, for the sake of YouTube, I'm going to crank up the clarity on this just a little bit. And then maybe even pull the detail that much more. Let's see what happens now. Turn this off. Turn it back on. And you can see that it's really just bringing out some of that, that contrast in there, right? Uh, and then maybe you're like, you know what? The other thing that I can do... is go ahead and open up um, or add some dynamic contrast. So you can add a little bit of dynamic contrast. We'll hit invert and then again, I'm just gonna paint that in very crudely. Doesn't have to be perfect, um, at least not for what I'm, for demonstration purposes. You should on your own individual images uh, make things the way that you need them to be all right um, but for demonstration purposes that's gonna work so now I have the leaf and it's popping just the way that I want uh, and I'll even do one last thing right if we're gonna get artsy and maybe I'll go with that and pull it back just a little bit maybe even darken it down and fade it out all right so now I have this really different looking image okay that's the before and here is the after really really cool maybe maybe not I don't know we'll hit resize because that's what this is all about what this lesson is all about so on one's thinking about it and it just brought it into resize so I have a six megapixel image here, or 6.6 .6 megapixels, right? That's what these dimensions are telling me. Now, if I know that I need a 12 megapixel image, or at minimum, a 10 megapixel image, all I have to do is type that in. Hit enter. And now I have resized this image to a 10 megapixel image and look at how much closer I can zoom in, right? Now, if I wanted to print this and I knew what I was, what type of printer I was going to. So let's say that I wanna to go to a Canon matte and I want to print this, um, there's that 40 by 40 that I was telling you about. Now, mind you, these are all in inches, right? Because these are print sizes. So think about a printer and the size that you are going to send your image out on. Um, we'll say, I don't see, uh, we'll go with a 10 by 10, right? Because I want to keep this as a square. So when I click on this, look what it does. It brings me into crop because it's like, well, you if I weren't at a uh, square ratio already, so let's say I go 8 by 12. Now it gives me an eight by 12 crop inside of here. And it's letting me know like, hey, if you wanna print this uh, at an eight by 12, you're gonna need to recrop your image a little bit there. 
but I want this to be a 10 by 10 or a square. So I'm going to do it like so, and we'll hit apply. Now I already have this resized and it is ready uh, for printing to my Canon matte paper at a 10 by 10. Okay. Everything has already been done for me. Uh, and let me reset this. Let's make this 96. Okay. And we'll come over here to eight by 10. Look at that. It changes the resolution. So I'll go back to 10 by 10 and I'll hit apply and look at that. My resolution changes to 300. So this goes back to my earlier statement that when you resize your image and you prepare it for printing, you want to make sure that your resolution size is somewhere between 200 to 300 um, for your printer. Just, you know, you'll, you'll have to look that up. But I think if you leave it at 300, it's going to be OK. Now, what's really cool here is it's even added in a little bit of sharpening for me. And that's just because this preset is already developed for printing. So if you know that you're printing to a Canon matte paper, then go for it. Now, what you may have noticed here is there's a little heart and on one is all about making things easy for you. So you can just click the little heart and now I have a favorite section. So if I, if I'm always printing to this Canon matte paper, and I'm always needing to resize whatever my dimensions are. And this is like a smart resizing thing. So all you have to worry about doing is editing your photo, cropping it the way that you want it to be. And if you already crop it into a square before you get to the resize module, because you know that you're going to put it on this 10 by 10 matte Canon paper, then your crop is not going to be compromised when you get into resizing. Now, if you make a decision later and you're like, you know what, I actually want to make this a four by six uh, or an eight by 10. Well, now your crop is going to be compromised. Okay. Now there are a series of printers in here. There are a series of printers in here that you have available uh, for you know, your exporting pleasure. Now, the resize method, there's a few of them. All right. Uh, and again, I am not the most intelligent when it comes to these. So I'm going to give you like the, the basic person's version of what these things are doing. And if you are more intelligent on what these things do, then please let me know in the comment section or uh, send me an email. I'm always looking to learn. So the first way is standard. This is kind of like a very aggressive way of resizing the image a little bit. And you'll see maybe a little bit more uh, fuzziness, if that's the correct technical term, less detail, right? And then you have the faithful version. And this one is going to um, resize in a way where you get more detail, but if you had a very noisy image, that noise is going to be more prominent. So if you shot the image where there wasn't as much noise, and as you see it popping up here, you can see like there's more grain in the image, and I don't even have a film grain simulation on. Now I'll zoom out, and here's my take on this. If you are printing an image, you'll be okay with using the faithful option because when you print an image, the noise, it, it like disappears, right? Um, very rarely do you see noise in a printed image so much so that when you want to get noise in an image, you have to add it in at a higher rate. So when you print it, it actually, uh, translates to, your image. So I wouldn't worry so much about the, if you're printing, I would not worry about getting more noise in the image if that's what you want to call it, right? Like you can see those artifacts. They're really starting to stick out. 
Um, and it's not very pleasing if you're zooming in. Like even with me looking at this image right here, uh, it doesn't bother me. In fact, it seems like it's a part of the character to this particular image, like a part of the charm. So don't overthink it, right? Here's the deal. Faithful, you get more grit in your image. Standard, you get less grit in the image. That's it. <clears throat> Excuse me for one second. All right, so we'll go with faithful for this one because it's okay. And you have a smoothness slider and it looks like you want to tell me something here. So it says increase the smoothness of details. Useful if the photo looks too sharp. Now, this one, it looks too sharp. So look, I'm just going to pull the slider. And look at that. It makes the photo look less sharp. Uh, this, I can't. I can't make this stuff up, right? Um, it's just that simple. Like, and the whole purpose of having a tool like this is to have something that works in a simple way, but in an effective way. And that's actually what on one is. It, it's a simple tool that works effectively. Now I'm going to hit done. And I'm going to hit save like I always do. And guess what? It's going to take me back to my brows. Now, we're going to take a look at this photo side by side with the other photo and see how well it, uh, it, it came together. All right. Um, and again, if you got questions, drop it in the comment section below. In the description box, there is a link to On One Photo Raw. Uh, where you can download it if you don't have it already. It is an affiliate link, but at no extra cost to you, uh, you get the software and I get a small commission, all right? That's just the trade-off. And that commission goes to helping support this channel. And if you're finding value in this, in this particular content or, or video, then please smash the like button and consider subscribing. Because I have a lot of information to share with you. So, we'll look at these two. I don't know why it jumped, but that's okay. Uh, so, the one on the right here is the original, and the one on the left is the resize. So, if I click on it, you already know the drill. It's going to zoom in just a little bit. And then if I click on this one, which was resize for print, it zooms in a little bit more um, now again this one was resized to be a 3000 by 3000 uh, megapixel image or I'm sorry 3000 by 3000 dimension uh, but it's specifically designed for print so it's not as large of a resolution image because it's going to print pretty large 10 by 10 or I guess it's not huge but uh, when we talk about square dimensions, that's a little bit large. But nonetheless, this one has been resized and it looks like it's actually a downsize, which is why this one uh, did not zoom in as far. I forgot that the original dimensions were 40 by 30, 40, 32 by 30, 24. And then we just turn this into a 3000 by 3000 square. So. So actually, it's actually a little bit smaller than this, uh, than the dimensions of this particular image. So that would explain why it doesn't zoom in as far as all the other ones we're doing. Now, I'm going to take a quick break to grab some water, uh, and then we're going to look at a few more images that I think will help bring this full circle for you. And, you know, really just show you how we can um, use Resize AI in our photography journey. All right. So let me go ahead and go back. And 
we are going to go here and here. There we go. Let's see. Actually, I don't want to work on those either. Let's take a look. Yeah. I got a the perfect image in mind. So I went for a hike. And um, there was a squirrel in a tree. And I, I was like, I was able to capture the squirrel in the tree and I'm just looking for it there it is all right so uh, I think we'll work on the JPEG just to save some computing power here so let me grab some water but I'm gonna go ahead and jump this over to the screen so that way you can see the little turtle or the little turtle, uh, the squirrel. I don't know my animals apparently. Now, the squirrel is here in the tree and I actually like this composition, right? I think it looks good. Uh, the negative space with all the leaves, they look really cool, but for the sake of what we're doing here inside of on one we're going to keep it at the original ratio but we're just gonna really hone in on this itty bitty little squirrel now this is not a mobile photo all right i did not shoot this on my iphone this one was captured with my canon eos r6 with the rf 100 to 400 uh 5.6 to f8 lens so, obviously, I was using my uh, mirrorless camera. But when we zoom in and I start to get that, like, fuzziness in the resolution here, we're going to see what happens when we upsize this or uh, just get this back to a 20 megapixel image. Because if I go resize... Once on one, thinks about what it wants to do. There we go. And then we go to photo size and I'll go megapixels. So I'm at a 3.78 megapixel image. Let's go to 20 megapixels. I just want to get this back to its original size, right? That's all. And then I think I'll leave everything else alone. We'll hit done. And We'll go ahead and save that. Um, and this was on the Timmerman Trail in South Carolina, if you're curious. Uh, the squirrels there are like super tame. Uh, they're wild, but they were not concerned about me at all. Uh, they did not run away. They were not fidgety. Uh, like, I mean, they they ran, but, you know. I was walking on the trail and they would run literally a foot in front of me just to get across the trail. So they are not afraid of people. Okay. Um, and I actually have another photo that I will share probably on a later date because we are approaching the top of the hour and I want to be a good steward of everyone's time. So I'm going to minimize this. And on the right, I have the original image. And look, on the left, I have the, uh, the resized image. Now, when I click on this, just look at the amount of detail that it starts to give back to the image, right? But I can zoom in on this like crazy. On this one, I can't really zoom in. I'm actually zooming out, even though I'm trying to zoom in, all right? That is the power of resizing your image. 
And if I wanted to blow this image up or expand it or, you know, really print this large, I now have the resolution necessary to do that. Whereas with this one, I wouldn't have the resolution that I need to really print this larger uh, because it would be cropped in and, and that would be the end of it. So there is a benefit to having resize in your photo editing software, which is why, you know, kudos to on one for including this as a free update to the 22 or the on one uh, 2022 uh, subscribers or members, or if you purchased a license to it, uh, the, the one time license, this was a free update. And I think it will be beneficial for anyone who really needs something like this. Um, and the reason I show this example is because this is probably the more realistic approach to where you would go with it, right? I wanted to get the composition I want, but I don't want to lose resolution. So on one, please help me regain some of that resolution. And look, I got it. All right. Now. It's not perfect, uh, and I may have missed focus originally. Uh, I don't know for sure. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But, or the lens may not just be that sharp. I don't know. I'm in the middle of reviewing it. Uh, now, the photo that I did want to share with you guys, because I thought it was like super cool, is this one right here. Look at this guy. I was, uh, I was walking down the path and like I told you, they run right in, they ran or they ran. Wow. The, get that out the way. The squirrels ran right in front of me and it actually loaded the, uh, more detailed, uh, preview. <clears throat> Sorry. Loaded the more detailed preview. And I think this is like super cool, right? The squirrel, it ran in front of me, climbed up the tree. This isn't very uh, high up. Uh, this is probably about five feet away from me, um, off the ground, maybe four feet. I don't know. Anyway, I looked up and the squirrel was looking right at me. And it was like he was posing like, hey, man, take my photo. And this is actually a cropped image. Now, I didn't resize it, but the original is this one right here. And I'll show it to you this way. This is the original image. Look at how small the squirrel is in the frame compared to this image. And the other one will pop up here eventually. There it is. I zoomed in or cropped in, not zoomed. I cropped in quite a bit. And this one is also edited. This one is uh, a raw JPEG. But right, I say raw JPEG. I mean, it's a JPEG that came straight out of camera uh, without me doing anything to it. This is why having that feature of resize AI is so important because I can print this or not print. I can export this at 20 megapixels and there's so much information like the sharpness that I already maintain throughout this image. Cause I actually nailed the focus this time. Um, when I run this through resize AI, I can have a 20 megapixel image of this squirrel sitting in the tree and it it looks like I actually zoomed in that much. So this begs to argue, do we need longer lenses? Now, <laughs> uh, I, I know that there are some people who will tell you, yes, we absolutely need them. Um, and there's others who will tell you, no, you don't need them. And that's all subjective, right? I'm not trying to start any drama or issues like that, but just something to consider. Like if I can zoom in on a squirrel just like this, 
and resize the image and still maintain my 20 megapixels to some degree, uh, even if I don't maintain a 20 megapixel. In fact, let me uh, just, I wanna see um, how large this file actually is. So it's 10 megapixels. So I would regain another 10 megapixels if I were to resize this to 20, right? But what if I only needed to go to 18? Do I need a longer lens? If you're a wildlife photographer, I'd love to hear your uh, take on it or idea. Um, and if you're not a wildlife photographer, maybe you're a sports photographer, which I would think that that's even more interesting, right? Uh, if you don't have one of those big 400 f 2.8 lens, but you do have a 70 to 200, they're a little bit further off the sideline or whatever it may be. Maybe you can get away with cropping in pretty good and then resizing the image. And again, I'm not being an advocate for cropping and resizing um, because I think that that does damage the image in a way. But maybe this could be uh, a, a good thing for you to use. I'd love to hear your opinion. So there you guys have it. It is now the top of the hour. So hopefully you found this uh, lesson helpful. And if you did, please smash the like button. It is completely free. Now, if you want to get a version of All One Photo Raw for yourself, then check the description box below and sign up. Like I mentioned before, there's going to be chapters if you're watching this on the replay. Uh, but if you're at the end, you probably already noticed that. So maybe that's unnecessary. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really enjoy uh, doing these live streams. I will be back here tomorrow night at 8 p.m. yet again. And we're going to go over manipulating light in Luminar. Now, that one's going to be a lot of fun because uh, Luminar has a lot of cool tools to offer. So we're going to take a look at it and see what we can do. Until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.